Hejsan och välkomna till Aktiespararna och den här företagspresentation i Stockholm. Mitt namn är Erik Hugsson och jag kommer vara moderator här ikväll. Nästa bolag på scen är Savo Sola och deras vd Jari Varjojte. Is it right? Ja, yeah. correct. Correct. All yes. right. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to see so many of you here today and, and have a chance to tell you about update on Savo Solar. So this is one of our deliveries in large scale deliveries in Denmark, a large scale solar thermal system for district heating. And here you have a short update uh, or summary of the history of the company. So we are a Finnish origin company making large scale solar thermal systems for industrial customers and, and delivering turnkey deliveries globally. We are making uh, the systems based on our uh, own innovative uh, large-scale collector, which is the most efficient in the world. And so far we have been delivering more than 75,000 square meters of these large fields, mainly in Europe. And, and for a quick update or quick insight for you where our products can be used. So, Solar thermal is used for heating, heating of, of individual homes, larger buildings, whole cities or villages, industrial companies, or even making solar thermal cooling. This is another system we have delivered in Denmark. And uh, as said, it's made out of the most efficient collector in the world. We are a technology company, and with the leading technology, we, want, we help our customers to uh, produce clean, competitive energy, and via that, we do our share uh, fighting the climate change. And we aim to be the first choice supplier to high performance solar thermal or solar co installations by 2020. And we are in a good way to achieve this goal. Why solar thermal? This is one answer or one main answer to the question. So uh, we and the planet is suffering on the emissions. This picture could be taken in many, many cities in the world, unfortunately. And uh, so it's not very nice to, to walk out there or, or drive a rickshaw or anything. We do have problems also closer to us. This is from Poland, close by border of Germany. And the title tells where we are. So in spite of all the talks and actions so far, we are here still. Anyhow, most countries, people in the world has realized that something has to be done. And here we have some recent actions, country level actions or, or decisions that where they are trying to improve the situation. China needs to do a lot. I just read the statistics that out of the 100 most polluted cities in the world in 2017, 57 were in China. And uh, well, top 10, there were nine from India. Well, it's not bad, good either. Um, anyhow, We all believe, I, I believe that we all think that the, the solution is that we have to go to the renewable energy more and more. And even the oil companies are saying the same, even though some of the major decision makers in the world are not on the same page yet. And solar thermal, large scale solar thermal will be one important solution, an elementary part of this. Here you can see the, the blue curve. You can see the capacity increase or build up in last 30 years for the large scale solar thermal systems. So in last recent years, it has been growing fast and the curve will be even more, more deep in the next 30 years. There's a lot of positive market development happening everywhere in the world. And, and first of all, I explain something about district heating. 
because that is one of our main market segments we are targeting. So it has been noted or studied in, in by several institutes and authorities that district heating is the most ecological and economical way of distributing clean heating. And that can be seen now happening in several places in, in, in Europe. We Nordic countries are forerunners in that, we know that, but still everywhere in, in Europe is happening the same. Same happens in China. Also, even in, in USA, they have more than 16, 600 district heating systems in USA. You, you don't believe. First I heard that I didn't believe, but I have to look. That's true. And solar thermal will be a big part of this clean heating, as can be seen from here. This is uh, uh, Mr. Lutz, is the head of the European District Heating Association. And this is what he has said in April last year. And to make this a bit more concrete, 240 terawatt hours means half a billion square meters of large scale solar thermal fields. Half a billion. Now the installed base was something like 200,000 square meters. And, and this means in monetary terms that in the next 30 years in Europe, only for this heating, the investments would be something more than 100 billion euros. This is explaining also why this is happening. So we have started in district heating with uh, fossil fuels, high temperatures, very high heat losses. We are moving towards lower temperatures, less heat losses, and then we can utilize more efficiently renewable energies. And this will be the future. So there will be no discussion anymore or in the future, whether it's heating or electricity, it will be energy systems. And there you try to find a way to produce as much as possible energy for cities, people, as much as possible with the renewable energy. And solar thermal will be an elementary part of this development. The second market segment we are working at is, uh, is industrial process heat. There are multiple industries in the world who are using hot water or heat in their processes. Some of the mines, greenhouses, dairy business, washing factories and, and so on. And plenty of that energy they are using is made by uh, fossil fuels nowadays. So there has been a lot of good development already now, as you can see from the map. But in this sector, the, the potential is forecasted to be enormous, also in terms of, of uh, solar thermal. Why this is happening? What are the market drivers? First of all, the reduction of emissions is the main motivation everywhere where you go. So that's motivation for countries, cities, municipalities, companies, individual people. And that brings into the game also the subsidies, which are important as in, in all of the renewable energies have been and, and still are. Especially in Europe, because we have a very low energy cost in many European countries. But if you see what now France and Germany, for example, are, are putting subsidies for clean heating, including solar thermal, the, the sums are extremely high, but they, they are also guaranteeing that the investors are getting their return on the investment. Outside Europe, especially in the industrial process heat industries, the energy price is the main motivation. So when we go outside Europe, the energy price can be really significantly higher than anywhere in, in, in Europe, in the heating sector. And in those cases, places, you also have a lot more solar radiation, solar energy. So it's a, it should be a no-brainer to utilize solar thermal instead of burning something. These are a couple of examples we have seen when we are out there discussing with our partners and customers. And our answer 
to this is the most efficient solar thermal collector and the systems made out of that, or with that. This chart is illustrating the efficiency of our collector well. So this is a, every blue dot here is a solar thermal collector model, which is entitled to have a subsidy in Switzerland. They are certified certified in, in Switzerland, so it's a, that, and, and the axes are cross area, so the size of the collector and then the power output kilowatt there. And only one collector is out of the line, telling that this collector model is able to produce more energy per square meter than any other model in the whole list. And that is thanks to our unique technology. So we are manufacturing our absorber, which is the core of the collector, with a different way than anybody else in the world. So we are the only company in the world who is able to utilize uh, the most efficient heat exchanger as part of the collector as an absorber. So very thin fold, thin, thin walled aluminum extruded profile. This is because we have our own optical coating process, which has been the, let's say, the, the first innovative idea of the company building up the capability to produce the most efficient solar thermal collectors in the world. Last year was a year of, of fast growth, especially the second part of it. And we see the situation continues. We have uh, plenty of projects in, in quotation and design phase, which also has to be so because the development of this project and decision-making processes are very long. It can be two to three or even four years. Still, we see the pipeline is strong and we will grow, and for that growth we also are now looking for more capital, so there will be a share issue uh, starting in a few weeks' time. Prospectus will be out this week. Still, we believe that the growth will continue. This picture illustrates our sales strategy in one picture. So we have three cornerstones. We have the premium product, the superior product. Then we look for partners who already are having experience on local companies, local heating companies, and, and we partner with them so we can deliver the turnkey system for them. And then we try to find partners who share the same value with us, so tr always trying to make the best possible solution to the customer, aiming for always the winning, cust winning customer and then the community prosperity, because the local companies are manufacturing, building up the systems together with us locally there, supporting the local economy at the same time we are building the green energy production. So our strategy of entering new markets or growing in, in existing markets is to find partners who are competent and capable and interested in to build up the green energy systems. And the partners we are looking are basically system integrators, construction companies, investors, companies who already have experience on heating sector in that region, country, state. And the last one I have highlighted there because whenever the project developers are coming to build up the systems, it means that the real uh, profits or, or potential is coming up. We have seen that happen in, with wind and PV, and now the solar thermal is coming up the same way. There are companies who are just developing the projects and then either selling them or selling them the energy to the customers. This is one of the deliveries we did last year, rather small our first in France, but the customer is very interesting, Veolia. It's one of the biggest energy companies in the world. They do also everything else. They drive buses in Finland, for example, and waste management. The first feedback we got from the local customer, the head of the system over there, said that he never believed how much 
heat you get from this system. And we hope that he tells that inside Veolia to everybody. And we know he has already done it. So we expect a lot of inquiries because of this. This is our second delivery in France, in Condé. And at the same time, now this is the biggest solar thermal system in, in uh, France. And it is also the first in the world that is on a one-axis tracker. So you basically can follow the, the sun. And that was done because the area was limited and the customer, the paper mill beside there, wanted to have more, as much energy as possible from the limited land area. Here you can see how it looks like close by, and you can see how we can turn the collectors. And this slide, I just wanted to show you that AEA Intec is an Austrian, very well-known uh, institute in this industry. And they are showing this slide in their presentation when they are talking about process heat. We are very happy about this, so they have pretty much everything right. Savo Solar Premium Collectors. Last year we got the biggest order of our history. Uh, Danish district heating company Creno. And this is the location, and there was an old field by a competitor. And now it looks already by, like this. So this is the first and only place in the world that our worst competitor or best competitor and us are having a side-by-side -side collective field producing heat to the same network. And we are very happy for this. We can verify our competitive collector against the real, in, the, in the real life. And as said, we always aim to make a winning customer, and, and this is a good, good example of satisfied customer. We delivered the first part of the system in 2016, and now we are installing a 5,000 square meters extension to this system uh, as we speak. It will be up and running in May. A good example of satisfied customer, and, and we are, of course, very about, happy about that. And then the main points of the case. First of all, the market is there. The growth is bound to happen. Second thing is that we have the technological advantage. We have a unique technology. We have uh, something that nobody else is doing, and we are able to verify that and, and able to build up why are that benefit to the customers? We have been growing fast last year. We have delivered new projects or references, which are now taking us to the next level. Big ones, turnkey, and this will help us to win new ones. Especially Konda will be something that everybody will go and see that. Even though it's in the middle of France. You, somebody could say in the middle of nowhere, but it's the middle of Fra France. We have a different strategy. We grow through and with our partners who can be integrators or project developers. So we can do it widely without investing so much our own resources running around. Still, we need to be able to support them and give the technical support. And this is what we are investing in. We want to be, and we will be, continue to be the most innovative company in the industry. And as an example, bring value to the customers like now we did the tracker on large scale collector system. And then we have the capacity and capability to grow. We are present in all strategic markets which will grow in the near future. And we have a sustainable competitive advantage offering the most efficient solar thermal solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jari. Uh, let's uh, all, all in here fresh up our English then. Um, first of all, 
the competition uh, within this industry is very high. Like, how how do you respond, let's say, from the 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 the, the competition from China? Actually, the the thing is that we we basically have uh, three competitors in the world. They all are European. Of course, two of them now are, are joining their forces with Chinese, but that is because of the Chinese market. The Chinese market is going to be one of the biggest in the world, and, and, and we are also focusing in to get into there. Uh, so we don't see a Chinese companies as a threat. We see them more like an opportunity and Chinese market as an opportunity. So this is different than the PV panel uh, business, because the Chinese are dominating that with the high investment and, and governmental subsidies in the 2008-2009. In the but in solar thermal, in the large scale, we basically are bringing the Western technology to China. Let's see then after a couple of years what happens, but now it is still us. So, so you're not afraid that the Chinese comp competition is coming to Europe? To well, we see that the, that the first it will happen that the European technology is going to China. And then we concur together with Chinese companies, the Chinese market. Then it remains to be seen what happens. But still, the first step will be that. Okay. Uh, and I also wonder how much, how many solar systems must you uh, in Savo Solar sell to break even? Do you have a need? Or how do you how do you quantify this? Like, what what do you, how much do you need to sell, or how many customers? Can you please explain for us? So well, since we are delivering projects, we, if we think about the Creno project, that was a 3.5 million euros project, and our turnover last year was 5.5 something plus. So it's a it's a huge thing. So it depends on how big projects we are getting, uh, how many how many we need to be in break even and and, and growing up. Uh, but we believe that when we grow the same speed a bit even less than that we can make it break even and, and we don't need uh, tens of projects to do that. Do you have any forecast of, like how long in the future you you can hope to come back here and say like now we break even? Well I internally of course we have a forecast we haven't been publishing that forecast so that's not something what I'll say but I believe that it will be I will be here standing <laughs> and telling that that one in the future. Definitely, That's yes. Good. <laughs> uh, also, uh, what would you say is the main driver for sales uh, for you? There's so many, like you have this uh, political landscape and like, and all the clean heating, but for Savo Solar, what is like the main driver, driver for sale? Is it the technology, for example, or is it? Um, I think that the, the, the main driver for customers making decisions is always energy price. Okay. So it, it's not the collector only, it's, the, it's how you design the system, how you do the system integration, how you operate it. That's why we also have in Condá in France, we have an operational maintenance agreement for five years, hopefully extending on that, but so we can assure that the system is operated well enough so the customer is getting all the benefits. So it's a, it's a combination of different things. It's energy price. It comes partly from our technological advantage and it comes partly about the system and, and then of course the price and, and everything. But we have seen also that it's not necessarily only the, the, the price. We have won cases that we have had higher energy price than our competitors because we have been bringing in the local partner. We have been able to build up the, the credibility and we have lost also cases where we have seen that. So it's not only thing because you have to, it's also human business, even though it's big companies and, and energy companies, but you, you create the credibility that you can, the district heating companies are doing only one, maybe two, this type of investments in their lifetime. So they want to have a partner they can trust, the product they can trust. So there are several elements. Uh, and if you, if you look broader on the competition, let's say other areas of clean clean uh, energy, let's say uh, wind, for example, like are you afraid that the, there are other types of energy sources or or uh, sectors that come come in and take uh, uh, customers from you in the solar heating? Well, all the energy sources are competing against each other in a way. Which one do you think is in the in the, in the, in the front? Uh, 
but, but I would say that as I was showing one slide where you have in the future, you have a, uh, in, the, in the more urbanized countries and, 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 and globe, you have more and more places where you talk about energy systems instead of, of thinking that shall we do the energy with the wind or shall we do it with the biomass or shall we do it with the ground heat. So you try to find the, the best possible solution for that city. For example, there's no sense to put the solar thermal, large solar thermal field in the city of Copenhagen. That's why they are building a large biomass for the district heating to get carbon free. But when you go to a small city like this, uh, don't remember even the name of Vorep, the, 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 or we'll go to Creno, where you have land area, then you start to calculate. So it's, it's about a, what is the best combination of this hybrid system, not necessarily that you compete. Still, I say that we all see renewable energy coming up instead of fossil fuels and, and the combination of those. All right. Do you have any question in the audience? We got one here. I have to repeat it before you answer. Sure. Okay, when will the when will the stockholders become happy? The Savusola stockholders. Yeah, that is a good question, and we are working heavily on that. Definitely, it has taken longer than anticipated, and and there has been a lot of uh, things that we have not seen forecasted, and it also is telling how slowly the the processes on the customer side are developing. We anyhow are confident and we believe that we can make you also happy and, and I, of course, uh, I'm sorry about the uh, development so far and I'm very grateful for the patience and the trust and, and we do our best to pay it back to you in the future. Any more questions? We got one in the front. What is your market share in the European market? Uh, that, that, that is a very good question, because if we think about Europe, there's basically one big operator who is making maybe 80% of the, of the market, and we are the second biggest, so we are making maybe 15, 10 to 15%. And who is the one with the 80%? It's a, it's a Danish supplier who has been there 20 years, Arkon Sanmark. And they have a very deep pockets behind them. <laughs> All right, we have uh, time for one last question. And I would say, um, how, uh, what, it will, what will be your biggest challenge for 2019? I would say that it's, it's uh, three, three things. First of all, of course, we have to enter the new markets. We have been working now a couple of years, and we believe we can do that. The second one is to build, still be able to support our partners. We have quite a lot of partners, so we have to be able to sort of educate them and support them on the technical side and, and when they do things. And then, of course, uh, we have to finalize the... the uh, improvement actions or cost-saving actions we have been working on, on some time already and we see now that uh, things are happening positively. Those three things I think we are focusing now, 2019. All right. Thank you and good luck, Yari. Thank you.